My name is Christopher Duldelow, and today I will be talking about the Emergency Severity Index, or ESI. By the end of this video, you will have an understanding of how triage nurses determine the severity of symptoms of people who arrive to the ED. Also, you will have the chance to practice triaging patients in different scenarios at the end of this video. Some hospitals have longer wait times than others. Wait times are influenced by the number of people who walk in, or who are brought in by ambulance, or even those who are brought in by helicopter. Other factors that influence the number of emergency department visits are the hospital's trauma designation, proximity to community members, and insurance status. In 2014, the CDC found the average wait time in the ED was 30 minutes, with the average treatment time at around 90 minutes. This means that the average ED stay is about two hours. Notice this does not include the length of stay if the patient becomes admitted to the hospital. To bring this subject closer to home, in 2012 the documentary The Waiting Room was released. The movie revolves around the ED and ED lobby at Highland Hospital, Oakland. While the documentary focused on the various stories of people who visit the ED at Highland on any given day, I wanted to point out that the average wait time in the ED at Highland was around 55 minutes. So, with many different people and conditions that arrive in the ED, what determines when patients get seen by a doctor? Introducing the Emergency Severity Index, or ESI. Created by a few physicians, this tiered system is a tool, or type of algorithm, made to sort patients based on the severity of their symptoms. Previous versions of the ESI was a three-level system. Now, in its fourth version, patients are currently ranked in a five-tier system, with ESI Level 1 taking priority over the other levels. Moving forward, I will be referring to these different tiers as either ESI Level or Priority Level. I will go into the different levels in the next slides. There's really two main questions you should be asking yourself when triaging a patient. Are they dying? Or are immediate interventions required? Think about your ABCDs. Does your patient have an airway, breathing, circulation problem, or disability that threatens their life? If you answered no to any of these questions, your patient will not be considered a level 1, and you should move down to level 2. More than likely, your level 1s will be coming via ambulance, fire department, or helicopter. Of course, some can walk in as a level 1 and should be treated immediately. Once you've determined your patient is not a priority one, ask yourself these set of questions. Is the patient in a high-risk situation? Is there severe pain or distress? Or is the patient newly confused, lethargic, or disoriented? This is where you have to listen to the patient's chief complaint, observe how they present to you, and use your nursing judgment. For example, if a patient complains of chest pain and is diaphoretic, he or she may be in a high-risk situation. Also, if a patient's family member complains their loved one is newly confused, you have to think of the worst things new onset confusion can represent. If you've determined the situation is not one of high risk, there is no severe pain or distress, or no new onset of confusion, lethargy, or disorientation, move on to priority level 3. Your level 3 patients are almost stable, but need at least two or more resources to remain stable. What are resources, you might ask? These are the things that are considered resources that the ED provides. Remember, if your patient needs at least two of these resources to remain stable, then they are considered a level 3. Here's a list of your resources. Labs, EKG, X-ray, CT, MRI, ultrasound, IV fluids, IV meds, nebulizer, uh, specialty consult, simple procedures such as a Foley or an NG tube, uh, or complex procedures such as a complex laceration repair. Now, here are items that are considered non-resources. A uh, simple history and physical, a saline lock, PO meds or prescription refill, a tetanus shot, simple wound check, uh, or the need for crutches, splints, or slings.
If your patient doesn't need any resources, but needs these non-resources, you can move on to ESI Level 4. Before moving on to level 4, however, you have to consider the patient's vitals. If you triage them at a level 3, take a look at their vitals. If they fall into any of these categories, you may have to consider moving them to priority level 2 because their condition may be worse than expected. Your level 4 patients are those who only need one resource to remain stable. Remember, your resources include labs, IV meds, specialty consults, etc. An example of an ESI level 4 patient is an otherwise healthy adult with a sore throat and fever or a healthy teenager with a minor thumb laceration. Lastly, your patients who are level 5 do not need any resources the, D the ED has to offer. These patients are your medication refill patients, tetanus or other vaccine needs, and physical exam needs. To quickly recap, your ESI Level 1 patient is in immediate need of life-saving interventions. ESI 2 is in a life-threatening situation, and ESI 3 is your patient who is relatively stable, but needs two or more ED resources to remain stable. However, if they are in the danger, zone, danger vital zone, you may need to escalate them to an ESI level 2. Moving on, if your patient is fine and needs only one ED resource, they are level 4. And lastly, if your patient doesn't need any ED resources, they are an ESI level 5. Now it's your turn to practice. Here is a given scenario. 54-year-old male brought in by ambulance complains of chest pain for two days and shortness of breath for one day. His blood pressure is 204 over 133, heart rate of 76, respiratory of 18, uh, SAO2 of 100%, and temp 98.5. He was uh, given nitro sublingual twice uh, and an IV was started in the field. Uh, history and meds for cardiac and diabetes. What is his ESI score? At this point, you may pause the video and go ahead and try and work this out on your own. If you answered an ESI level of 2, you would be correct. Here's another practice scenario. 74-year-old, non-English speaking male complains of cough with white sputum and chest pain. Cough is not present currently. The current impression is to rule out TB. His current vitals are 113 over 61, heart rate of 94, respiratory 18, uh, oxygen saturation at 99%, temp 97.5, and currently 0 out of 10 pain. He's taking Robitussin, he does have a history of cataract surgery. So what's his ESI score? Again, at this point in the video, you can pause it and go ahead and play when you're ready. If you answered an ESI level of three, you would be correct. To conclude, triaging is an important job. The ESI is a method that we train with and trust. It is the front lines between the public and the emergency department, and it's why some have to wait longer than others to be seen by a doctor. Like I said, it takes time to develop. A lot of nurses don't like triaging at the emergency department because it's the quickest way to lose their license, uh, because they might miss something that uh, is potentially fatal. It is important to become seasoned, to practice the ESI, and to trust your nursing assessment. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the Emergency Severity Index.